Hi everybody, uh, welcome. We are in Damascus with one of my favorite comedians in the world. So I have like five top. He's definitely my five top. This is Treka. Hello everyone, how is everyone doing? And hello to all Carla's uh, followers. I hope everyone is doing great. Es uno de mis comediantes favoritos. And he honestly has done more reporting about Syria from the political side and the human side than any other journalist in the in the Middle East and also, you know, in the Western world. What what got you into this? Well, before I was a, a stand-up comedian, I used to do comedy in the bars and nightclubs and restaurants. But you know, when the Syrian war started, you know, uh, you can't help but talk about things that you're experiencing every day. So I was looking at the mainstream media, I'm looking at the news and I found and I saw that most of the mainstream media's reporting about the mm -hmm. Syrian war was false and incorrect. So I got a lot of questions, people asking me about the Syrian uh, crisis. So I said, you know what, let me start doing videos talking about the Syrian crisis, what is really going on in Syria, who are we fighting, who are these uh, terrorist groups and who's funding them, and all these important uh, uh, issues that the whole world should really know about. So, Treka, I have a, um, I, I want to know uh, the followers to really kind of like understand a little bit the situation in Syria. If you could resume, you know, right now in the United States, we have a very uh, divided country. Yeah. It is a moment where um, uh, you either are in this side or you are in this other side. And sometimes the foreign policy is not completely understand. Mm -hmm. You as a Syrian uh, that has been living in Syria and that has seen the past also of our presidents in mm -hmm. uh, the United States, what will be your assertion mm -hmm. on this? And I'm just going to make a little resume to the people. Él empezó a hacer justamente stand-up comedy, eh, él hacía siempre stand-up comedy y empezó a reportar cosas sobre Siria y hablar sobre el tema de Siria, sencillamente porque se dio cuenta que había muchas mentiras en los medios de comunicación y que no estaba mostrando la verdad. Entonces decidió hacer, to hacer todos estos videos y hablar sobre terrorismo, sobre ISIS, sobre Al-Qaeda y todo lo demás. Entonces le estoy preguntando qué piensa él de los dos de los diferentes presidentes en los ocho casi años de, de guerra en Siria. Eh, ¿Me entiendes? Uh, no. Capito. Sí, mamacita. Sí, eh, sí. sí mamacita. Ah, he knows the good words. <laughs> so, what is, ¿qué, ¿qué es lo que piensa en este periodo de ocho años? Si ha habido diferencia en la política exterior mm. entre los diferentes presidentes en Estados Unidos. Mm. Well, uh, about the American uh, presidents, uh, whether it's Democrat or Republican, I personally feel that no matter who the president is, the American foreign policy doesn't change. Now, uh, I remember watching the American election and I was uh, watching, you know, the debates between Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump. And I was uh, rooting more for Donald Trump because with Donald Trump, I was more hopeful that things in Syria would improve. Mm -hmm. Because like to me personally, I used to view Hillary Clinton as a transgender Obama. You know, it's the same person, but this time with a vagina. The, the foreign policy will never change and all of this stuff. And to me personally, like Hillary Clinton and Obama, they both have more bloods on their hand than a woman masturbating on her period. So I was more hopeful with Trump because he was uh, giving us, uh, he was saying that uh, we want to remove our troops from uh, Syria. He was talking about, you know, ending the war in the Middle East. He was also exposing Obama and Hillary Clinton for supporting ISIS, for sending them money, for sending them weapons with, of course, their allies in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, and, you know, NATO states. So I saw that uh, Donald Trump was an outsider. Mm -hmm. I was more mm -hmm. hopeful that uh, with Donald Trump, in, things in Syria will improve. Now, if you want to look at the situation here in Syria, of course, there's a huge improvement from 2016 to 2018 in Syria. If you look at the map of the Syrian, uh, the Syrian map in 2014, let's say 15, 16, things in Syria were always getting worse and worse and worse. I remember there was a time where uh, almost 40%, 40% only of, the, of Syria was in control of the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the Syrian government and army. But right now, uh, you're talking about almost 75 to 80 percent of Syria under the control of the Syrian yeah, army. Uh, many, many, many cities 
got liberated in Syria. Like uh, I remember maybe the last time when you came here, mm -hmm. there were many cities that were still under the control of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Like now, for example, Damascus countryside is completely, completely uh, safe. Just uh, a couple of uh, days ago, the city of Sweden, in the south of Syria, is also completely liberated from the terrorist groups. You have Dera also uh, uh, liberated, uh, Knetra, Deir Zor, and uh, you know now all that is remaining is the city of Idlib. This is the focus the of the Syrian people. Before, before we get into Idlib, because this is really mm -hmm. important, um, you know, one of the questions that I have, because, you know, and we're going to talk about Tulsi Gabbard, you know, mm -hmm. she's introducing all these um, incredible actions to help stop the war, uh, not only in Syria, in Yemen and other places, but you know that Hillary Clinton, in the mm -hmm. beginning, when Bush was president, she was talking, what, what uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is doing now, um, Hillary Clinton was doing, and she was denouncing the creation of Al-Qaeda, so, I mean, for, for a woman like me who believes, you know, in the, in the, in the power of, uh, of women in politics to change mm -hmm. towards a more compassionate world, um, it was also a big deception. Mm -hmm. I used to be a big fan of her. And um, what, I, just this as a personal and as a Syrian, why, why do you think this sort of thing like happened to her? Uh, do you think it was the Obama influence into her as being secretary? Or what do you think it really happened in order I mean, to, 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 to increase, you know, the, 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 the war and, and the genocide, not only in Syria, but also in Libya. You see, Hillary Clinton, I think the main reason why she lost is because nobody trusts her. Nobody trusts her because she's a liar. I don't think she lost because you have uh, Americans that just hate women and don't want a woman to become president. I'm sure if a more qualified woman ran for presidency, she would have also won. There would be a chance for her winning. But the reason why Hillary Clinton lost because Hillary Clinton is very corrupted. She's been uh, in many, 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 there are many, many um, allegations on her, whether it was the, the email or whether the Libya uh, thing. She lies a lot and she's been caught in camera lying a lot. Her policy will not change from Obama. That's, that's the main reason why uh, people uh, didn't vote for her. People were, were, uh, were bored of Obama's policy and they wanted a change. And, they wanted the idea. Yeah, I and Donald I, Trump I, I, came I, I, as an outsider and as someone that, uh, isn't into politics. So I think that's uh, one of the reasons why he won and she lost. Like for example, uh, Hillary Clinton um, flip flops in many, many, um, many, many issues. Like for example, I remember there are videos of her that she's against gay marriage and, and stuff like that. When, when gay marriage became something popular and uh, something that the majority of the American people support, she suddenly started saying, yes, I also support gay marriage. So the idea of Hillary Clinton, no one really trusts her and everyone knows she's just into it for the power, for the politics and for the White House. She's not really into it because she loves her country or she's patriotic or... I'm gonna just uh, make a little uh, super short because this was a, a long answer. Eh, básicamente su respuesta ha sido que durante el tiempo de Obama y de Hillary ha habido demasiada sangre y que él cree que aquí para los sirios eh, lo que estaba pasando es que la situación cada vez iba peor pero con Donald Trump de, denunciando justamente estas acciones y la creación de ISIS él, eh, la gente aquí en Siria tenía mucha más esperanza sobre él sin embargo él dice que la política exterior de Estados Unidos no cambia con los presidentes y que en realidad eh, él cree que es un, es, 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 es un problema mucho más profundo sin embargo él nos dice que se han ido liberando las diferentes ciudades a lo largo de estos dos años específicamente por ejemplo Damasco ahora está completamente libre de terrorismo hasta el sur, las afueras y el 40% de Siria en un momento que fue de hecho cuando yo estaba acá el 35%, 35% actually of uh, Syria was secure mm -hmm. when I came the first time in February 2016 and all the rest was taken uh, over armed groups and terrorist groups, mm -hmm. eh, entonces mm, hoy en día el 80% de Siria está completamente liberado y lo que él decía es que solamente nos queda Idlib para que sea eh, para que sea completamente liberado y luego estábamos hablando que yo decía que Hillary de hecho en un momento denunció justamente las acciones de Al Qaeda durante el gobierno de Bush pero él dice que el problema de ella fue que ha mentido demasiado y se ha corrompido eh, al final de cuentas eh, vemos que esto pasa con los políticos en todas partes so we see this like corruption in all in all politics in all countries in all governments and this is something that we are all fighting in the third world countries for first world countries and is it is something also that we the people have to actually change um we were going to uh, talk a little bit about idlib so idlib is mm -hmm. like 
that one place that um, is under so, so much protection mm -hmm. of uh, UK or France and the United States specifically, yeah. when we heard that, oh my God, you know, we already know that there is going to be a chemical attack in Idlib. Mm -hmm. So if you do it, if there is a chemical attack in Idlib, we're, we're going you. to bomb, we're going to bomb. <laughs> and this hap this is like, it's been happening for three, four months now. Yeah, yeah. And Idlib is still, what is the actual situation in Idlib? Mm -hmm. And why do you think it has not been liberated from terrorist groups because I want to also make sure that I explain that it is not that we are only saying that uh, that uh, the Syrian army is the most amazing and is the only force. We are being very specific about the liberation. It's about liberating areas from terrorist groups. groups. This has nothing to do with being par be partisan or being partisan. Mm -hmm. It is not about being biased. It's about the absolute truth. There's a big problem in Syria and it's that terrorist group have been occupying this country and have been beheading people and have been raping children and have been raping women and have been destroying the country. So this is what I mean when I said liberation. Liberation from terrorist groups. Yeah, so, sorry, sure. I just wanted because yesterday they brought me this big thing mm -hmm. trying to for me to explain. I said, I'm not just saying like, oh my God, I am free, free of what? Free of terror. Yeah, that's true. Now, uh, what is happening in Idlib? It's the last city under the control of these uh, jihadist mm -hmm. Wahhabi terrorist groups. And these people, they're maniacs, they're barbarians. And most of the places, if you remember, there were times where Syria, uh, the Syrian army would liberate an area. Mm -hmm. Some people would agree to do reconciliation, some won't agree. Right, exactly. So the people that didn't agree to do a reconciliation, they were uh, put inside buses and sent to Idlib from many, many cities in mm -hmm. Syria. So what is in Idlib right now are many groups of jihadist terrorist groups, very dangerous people. And these people right now in Idlib, they have already implemented Sharia law on the people by force. You have uh, many, many videos. There was a video that they uploaded while they were bragging about it. They saw a guy, you won't believe it, they saw a guy sitting with a girl in the park. So they held the guy, took him into the square of the city and they, they, they sentenced him to like 40 lashes in the middle of the street because he was sitting with a woman that is not his wife. So you can imagine how ignorant these people and how close-minded and backwards they are. They're implementing Sharia law, you're hearing about beheadings, they're cutting the hands of people, they're forcing women to wear hijab, uh, no more uh, unisex uh, schools, all the schools are now uh, segregated. Yeah. You have schools just for boys and schools for girls. You have uh, schools that you have, uh, girls that are 9, 12 years old and they're making them wear the niqab where only her eyes are showing. So these are the people, the Syrian people are fighting. These people, they're not moderate rebels. They're not freedom fighters like the mainstream media always talks about them. These people are jihadists and they are Wahhabi terrorist group. Yeah, more closer to my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these people are jihadists and terrorist groups and all the Syrian people are united and want to get rid of them. We would, I really, uh, I was against the uh, the agreement they did that Turkey and the uh, West that they did that they should do a ceasefire in Idlib because the Syrian army had this momentum and he was uh, going to uh, finally liberate the city of Idlib but then they stopped it. They was like, no, now just do a ceasefire and, and uh, demilitarize the area or whatever. And now you will see, you will see. When uh, we, we uh, liberate the city of Idlib, you are going to discover new tunnels Built because in this month the yeah. where there was a ceasefire, yes. I don't think they are just sitting looking at my yeah, pictures exactly. and your pictures. No, they are building, uh, they are digging tunnels. They are still receiving uh, more weapons and they are making their army more stronger so that the fight will be way more chaotic. Yeah, yes, it's going to. I mean, we're gonna uh, be probably end up seeing the loss of more innocent mm. lives because this is the other thing. Um, that, uh, oh, sorry, I need to make a little resume. Eh, básicamente lo que está diciendo es que Idlib no ha podido ser liberada y en este momento están incrementando la ley Sharia más que nunca. Había un hombre en una plaza sentado con una mujer que no era su esposa y lo condenaron a 40 latigazos solo porque estaba con una mujer que no era su esposa. A las mujeres actuales les obligan a que se cubran, a que se cubran la cara eh, eh, y es exactamente ese terrorismo el que ellos no quieren. Ellos quieren un país secular, ellos quieren un país abierto. Eh, uh, Treka, oh, something that I always try to get to explain to people mm. don't they force you to cover in Syria this no. is the first question they ask me like 
How many wives do you have? How many, like, people don't understand the concept of what Syria is, the secularity, so, or really it's not Islamic. Okay, let me tell the people, because I won't get this Explain to questions. the people, get closer to him, okay, please. Okay. Now, Cheers. Syria, <laughs> Syria is a secular country. It's not an Islamic country like Saudi Arabia and most of the Gulf states. No, Syria has a very, very multi-religious and ethnic background. You have the Muslim Sunnis, you have the Muslim Shias, you have the Alawis, you have the Christian Orthodox, you have the Christian Catholics, you have the Druze, you have a small minority of Jews too. You have other ethnicities like the Kurds, the Armenians and so on. So the, 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 the laws that the Syrian government imposes on the Syrian people is perfect for the people because it doesn't force anybody to follow any religion. It, uh, it, it allows everybody to live the lifestyle that he wants to. Like now, if, uh, today, if we go to the old city, for an example, mm -hmm. or somebody else, we would walk in the old city and I would show you that you would be walking in the street and you would see a mosque and then you would see a church in the same sidewalk, in the same street. Then you would walk just two steps, you would find a bar, then a nightclub, then a restaurant, then a cafe. And everybody is coexisting peacefully together. Hijab is not forced. Uh, Sharia law is not implem implemented. Uh, Non-Muslims are, although look, uh, Muslims are the majority in Syria. Mm -hmm. Muslims are the majority in Syria, but non-Muslims are not treated as second-class citizens. They're all treated equally. So this secular law that Syria has is perfect for the Syrian people. Mm -hmm. As you can see, even the, 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 the first lady of Syria, she's not wearing a hijab. Have you ever seen the first lady of the Saudi Arabian kingdom or the first lady of some Gulf country? No, because it's haram for her to show her beauty and her hair in, on TV. So as you can see, in Syria, we are not an extremist country. People uh, have the freedom to live and uh, uh, live the lifestyle that they choose to live. There are Muslims that drink alcohol. There are Muslims that eat pork here. Nobody is punishing them. Nobody is throwing them in jail. And nobody is forcing them to do whatever they want. You know, you make me remember this guy that I met in in Washington, D.C. And I asked him and I said, yeah, I'm from Syria. I said, oh, you're Syrian. And, and he says, yes. And I said, you're Muslim? You know, because I know how Syrians mm -hmm. hate mm -hmm. to be told, you know, but I like to provoke them, you know. He says, Yes, but I am a, but I am a, a bad Muslim. And I said, what do you mean you're a bad Muslim? I said, I am a Syrian Muslim, <laughs> which means I love everybody. I love Christians. I love everyone. We don't talk about religion. Yeah. And I love this. This is, this is just so important that in the Middle East, especially when you have governments that are so extreme in their views on Islam, mm -hmm. that you have a secular nation that is not only moderate, because the point is not about being moderate. It is a, it is a nation that has advanced so far even on the rights, not just of the of the women as itself, but the coexistence of the religions. Yes. Estaba diciendo justamente que en este país hay, o sea, tiene gente de todas las religiones, cristianos, eh, pequeño porcentaje de judíos, drus, eh, eh, cri, eh, cristianos católicos, cristianos armenios, mm. y que todos han estado eh, coexistiendo de una manera pacífica, que tú te vas aquí en Batum, al centro de la ciudad en, en Damasco, que los voy a llevar, y pueden ver mis otros live videos, y puedes encontrar un bar de un lado, un bar del otro lado. Mm. It is um, it, it's one of the things that has made me fall in love with Syria and yesterday I was showing a little wedding and I like to always show everything there are places where uh, you see that are extremely luxurious or mm. places that are very natural or they're very ethnic mm. and this is one of the magics you know of Syria um, I just want to say something before I forget yes 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 same. this is something very important I advise everyone watching us to also Google uh, you should read about the massacre of the Christian Orthodox town called Malula my grandma is actually from there uh, this was a this is a very old and ancient Christian town the people of Malula till today imagine till today they still speak speak Aramaic, which is the language of the Jesus Christ. Uh, read about the massacre of when these terrorist groups, these jihadists that we Syrians are fighting, read about what they did to this town of Malula when they entered. When they entered the town of Malula, they started killing the Christians, they entered the uh, churches and uh, started uh, breaking the crosses, burning uh, the, the churches, killing nuns, kidnapping uh, Christian people. And this is the message that we Syrians are, are trying to tell the whole world, that the people we are fighting, they're terrorist groups and they're not tolerant. Yeah. If let's say for an example, they overthrow the Syrian government and whether we're talking about ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Jabhat al-Nusra or Ahrar al-Sham, they're all jihadist, extremist, Wahhabi groups. So, they might, they might have different names. They might be funded by different countries. 
but they all share the same Wahhabi ideology. And yeah. if they overthrow the Syrian government, this is how they're, this is what they are going to do to all the uh, non-Muslims in uh, Syria, and this is what they're going to also do to the Muslims that are not following the Islamic law uh, literally. So, if let's say they see a Muslim that, for example, is drinking alcohol, they might behead him, they might kill him, they might punish him in the middle of the streets, and this has been practiced many times and there are many videos and proofs of, of the barbaric if you guys go into my live videos back in may when i was in malula i have two live videos here uh, where i precisely show you i mean this is the real place where they are speaking the language of that supposedly master that we are all following that mm. we call ourselves christian because because of jesus and these are the original people that started speaking this language thousands of years ago and when they asked me so who should we save i mean if we believe ourselves are christian people we should save the christian people and the point of uh, understanding our heritage this is not a loss for syria it is a loss for the world this is our loss and you know one of the things that hurt me the most when i was in malula i got to see some some of the bags where it used to say christian child do not touch yeah, yeah. I mean, this is uh, <laughs> this is one of the things that you say, like, it, it, how child? Yeah, I don't yeah. care what it goes before it. I don't care if it's a Muslim, Christian, or anything. How can you dare to say something like this? And this is just one of the things you know that hurts um, hurts my soul the most as a human being. Estaba hablando justamente sobre el el, el tema de el uni, la única ciudad donde todavía se habla el arameo que es en Malula y cómo eh, han matado a las personas, cómo han entrado, cómo han quemado las casas, cómo han destruido las iglesias que nos pertenece a nuestra herencia cultural de todos nosotros y que nosotros nos hemos quedado callados because we didn't know. We were not able to act because our media never told us this was happening. Yeah. Because if we wouldn't know that these things were happening, we would have done something. We would have take, taken action but we didn't because we don't know. This is why I am here. This is why a stand-up comedian is reporting on the truth of Syria, because it is our duty as a human being to tell the truth yes. and to tell yes. these sort of things. Mm. Uh, sorry. Even, even the, also a good example is the city of Sueda. Mm -hmm. When they entered, the, the, there, there's also a massacre in Sueda that happened two months and a half ago. Um, you had ISIS jihadists that entered the city of Sueda, which is the south of Syria. <clears throat> they entered from Al Tanf area, which is an area under the supervision of the US military. They entered to the city of Sueda and started entering village, villages 3 to 4 a.m. in the morning when everyone was sleeping. And they started breaking into houses and they started shooting all the men that were inside the houses and kidnapping women and children. And these uh, women, and one of the main reasons why they attacked the, the city of Sueda is because they said um, the city of Sueda from the beginning of the crisis till today, they have always been supporting the Syrian government. They never held weapons. They never joined ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Jabhat al-Nusra or the Free Syrian Army. They never gave them money. They never, uh, you know. So this was like a kind of punishment to give the people of Sueda which is actually the majority of the people of Sweden are come from the Druze religion. So this, so to them, this was a kind of punishment to give the, the people of Sweden. But, you know, thankfully, last week, the Syrian army was able to uh, rescue most of the kidnapped people that ISIS uh, kidnapped from Sweden. But unfortunately, there were some kidnapped people that uh, got killed because the Syrian army has been looking for the kidnapped people for more than a month and a half. And every week or two, the ISIS jihadists would uh, release a video on the internet uh, beheading a girl or beheading a, a, a little boy just to pressure the Syrian government more and more and more. So this is the kind of thing that we Syrians have always been, have been facing for the past seven years. But the good news, like to keep it on a positive note, that the good news is that now more than 75% of, of, the, of the Syrian land is liberated. And all that is remaining is Idlib. Idlib is like an infected pimple that all we need is just to like, you know, squeeze the bacteria out of it. That's, That's what a I very, feel. This is a very good example. Guys, I, I want to make sure you understood what he said. And in order for me to kind of explain is that, okay, if this is, this is the area where Sueda is, okay, Sueda is over here. Our American army is over here. Mm -hmm. And ISIS is over here. So behind where 
our army of the United States is, it is still the pocket of ISIS. Um, so basically they pass through our army to get into Sueda and kidnap the people. This is the truth. It is something that happened. Did our army know? Did the government, does the government of the United States know? Are they receiving also the pressure of, uh, of ISIS? What is happening? Why can't we destroy ISIS if our army is over there? This is the question that we have to make and these are the calls that we have to make to our representatives. So I'm so sorry, but this is so important for us to really understand what he said. It's, it's, it's not a minor thing. It is a major, major thing. But what he's saying, many of them, you know, that got killed. I want to show some of the pictures of the girls that were kidnapped because these are Drew's girls. Uh, oh, because you are in the... Uh, uh, my uh, phone is with him. Maher, can we have please the my phone? The, the phone? Yeah. Uh, and they forced them to use hijab. Like Básicamente, that. él ha explicado que ISIS ha entrado a través del ejército americano ha tomado Sueda, que es un lugar que básicamente son los Drus, eh, han tomado las mujeres, les han obligado a utilizar eh, hijab, las han matado a un montón de ellas. Vean estas niñas, they're, 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 they're little girls, they're women, simple women, that's ISIS, in the flag behind ISIS. This is ISIS. And these are the pictures of the kidnapped uh, women and uh, oh, Hold on children. one second, because I want, I want them to, to take a look. Mm. I mean... How old is this girl? She's like 15. She's she's a 15 girl. And look, she, they're making her uh, wear the hijab by force. The, the women of Sweden don't wear hijab. So the, this is just an example of what will happen to Syria if these uh, terrorists uh, win and succeed and overthrow the Syrian government. This is the most important question right here that I want to make to Treka. Mm. I talked to so many Syrians and I tried to explain, you know, in the United States uh, about you know, if you don't support the terrorists or the rebels, then you are supporting the forbidden word. Mm. And you cannot say the forbidden word. How can you dare? So what you just said, mm. what are the options that a Syrian person has and why there is being reconciliation? Why people that was against the government of Syria all of a sudden started supporting and joining the state? Explain to the world why is it that a regular Syrian person, that it's, it was apolitical mm. and even was in some, to some extent from opposition, why they have chosen to remain and defend the state? Mm. Now look, I, I as a Syrian personally, uh, I don't view the Syrian government as angels, that people that uh, don't do mistakes or that uh, people that don't have laws that needs to be improved mm -hmm. or changed 100%. But my loyalty is to my own country. I love my country. I don't want to see my country get destroyed. Now, the problem is that uh, we in Syria, we have two choices. We are, we are fighting jihadist Islamic extremist groups. And these people are very, very, very dangerous. I don't have any problem with anyone that um, uh, thinks there are policies or laws in the Syrian uh, government that needs to be changed. Every look in every government, there there are policies that needs to be improved, needs to be changed. There are maybe things that needs to be removed completely. We are fighting in the United States yes. for these changes too. Exactly. Yes. But I, as a Syrian person, see that as soon as you hold weapons, mm -hmm. as soon as you hold weapons and join a, an army group or a terrorist group or a militant group, to be more like clear, you are immediately considered. A terrorist you're not you're no longer trying to help your country you're destroying your country so that's the same thing with the for an example uh, the, the the jihadists we are fighting I don't have any problem if, if anyone is against the Syrian government or the policies uh, he should maybe uh, like create a political party uh, write down new rules, maybe change the constitution, wait for the next election and uh, elect yourself. If the people like your new policies, they would vote for you in the next election. This is the democratic way. This is how every uh, country should work. But in Syria, what we had is that we had people that started holding weapons, 
started uh, destroying uh, public property, started uh, kidnapping people, killing people, uh, doing suicide bombs, throwing missiles in uh, residential areas. Like the, when you went to Ghouta and Duman, Eastern Ghouta, yeah. these people, they were throwing missiles and the rockets every day on the yeah, on Syrian the, residential the, yes, areas. Okay, exactly. so you guys are against the Syrian government. Why are you throwing rockets every day and killing innocent people? Yeah. So this is my, uh, this is how I view it. Uh, you have people that are jihadists and terrorists and you have uh, the Syrian government, who is a secular government, of course there are policies that need to be changed and improved, but mm -hmm. I as a Syrian see, as soon as you hold weapons and start joining ISIS and Al-Qaeda, you're, you're, you're making the problem way yeah, more the worse. Cha the chaos comes like a really bad, and uh, this is really important for everybody to kind of like understand also, well, I always say this is important because everything that he's saying, it is important, not to sound repetitive, but it's just like really important. We are talking about more than half a million people that have already yeah. died, yeah. Uh, where probably 40% of the country has been almost completely destroyed. And yes, of course, it is not only one side of the part that is being destroyed it's destroyed from both parts because there is a war exactly. and that's the reason why the war needs to stop we're not saying that one side is an angel or the other one or the other side is an angel we are advocating for peace for the end of war because if there's if the war doesn't end there are going to be more killings not only mm -hmm. that more death more destruction of syria that on the end i am so sorry to say mm -hmm. this but syria i think belongs to the world mm -hmm. the world heritage it is in this country so we should be protecting our heritage as human beings. Yeah, just one more thing, uh, just uh, to be clear. Uh, the majority of the Syrian people do support uh, the Syrian president. The majority of the Syrian people, they really do support the Syrian president. And that was proven in the last election we mm -hmm. had in 2014 and even in today. But the main reason why the Syrian war has, you know, been very long and it took seven years is because the people we are fighting are getting weapons and money and logistic support from outside government. Saudi Arabia played a very huge role in financing these terrorist groups and brainwashing them with their ignorant Wahhabi ideology. Same with Qatar, they helped with the mainstream media and money. Turkey also, they helped with the border. Turkey was allowing terrorists to enter Syria from the Turkish border and terrorists to escape from Syria to Europe from the Turkish border. Same with America, same with uh, NATO countries like UK, France, uh, Canada. All of them, all of them. So this, so the, the reason why this war stayed so long is because the terrorists the we are fighting them, yeah. are, are getting money, are getting weapons, are getting financial logistic support from all these countries. If they didn't have this support in, I think, two months, the whole crisis would have ended. It will be, it will be finished. Um, well, you know, uh, guys, I always try to bring you uh, all the different point of views, but I like for you to hear from the people that have been leaving the war. It is very easy to talk about the war and to give our opinions about uh, the policies of countries when we are not there. Oh, they should do this or they should do that. You know, it's like that, that, uh, that mother should do this to their child. But we don't know what is a real problem. We don't know how it is to live in, in a country that was so peaceful the way it was, mm -hmm. and it's been Syria, and impose a word onto them. And I am also not uh, talking or, or not acknowledging that they were and they are people that not only want improvements, but they were also asking for these improvements. Yeah. As we see even in my country of birth, which is Bolivia, we're also fighting for these improvements. We are fighting to, uh, to keep uh, our democracy, but we also need to understand that democracies in all the different countries are completely different. And we need to question ourselves this in the West that we're always talking about democracy. Do we truly have democracy? Do we really have democracy? When now, a days, we are even targeted in our social media for posting something that some others don't like. So this is what questions that I want uh, to do. But look, I mean, we enter like a very serious conversation when I went, one of the best like comedians yeah, over yeah. here, we're talking about all this like serious stuff. Um, I, I also would like for you to share you know, a little bit of, of how Syrians have been fighting the war uh, from their home front, from their schools. You know, it drives me crazy every time like I meet somebody and they have like two careers mm. and they speak two, three languages. Um, and this is something that I always ask to people, why is education so important for Syrians? How have you been coping with the world? How do you still have this, you know, energy to, to stay positive, to, to, to be always so happy, mm. to have this like spirit for celebration and somehow stay just like in, in, in just enlightened, mm. you know, and happy. You know, the Syrian people, they're very, very strong people. 
the Syrian people are strong. And if you look at history, uh, Syria through history, uh, we've been conquered many, many times, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, from the Ottoman Empire or, or you know, Romans. And it, it, our history has uh, always been people conquering us, was us fighting and uh, kicking them out at the end of the day and then rebuilding. So uh, people think that the only people fighting for Syria are the Syrian army. But no, there are a lot of people that are fighting uh, not through uh, weapons. Like, for example, myself. I am uh, fighting for my country by raising awareness about the situation, about tell, by telling the truth mm -hmm. uh, through social media and Facebook and YouTube and through my comedy and my politics and uh, journalism. So you have everybody in Syria explain a, a, a small role. You have people that are rebuilding. There are people that are cleaning up the uh, rubbles from the damaged mm -hmm. areas. You have people that are still... Uh, Education is still around, available, you know, the hospitals and the healthcare and all the stuff. Thankfully, they are still available in Syria. So, uh, Syria is still rebuilding and hopefully, I think, uh, very, very soon, we will liberate Idlib and uh, we would now focus on uh, rebuilding our country and uh, rebuilding our economy. Remember, because there's something very important we also need to talk about, which is the sanctions that we are imposed on us, you know, like, the West imposed many sanctions on the on Syria, and the, they think by doing this they are actually punishing the Syrian president. When in reality, with these sanctions, they are actually punishing the Syrian people exactly. and not the sanctions Syrian. Sanctions never punish government. Sanctions they, only punish the people. Yeah. And this is one of the things we've been working also with my friend uh, Nahed. She's uh, an amazing also journalist here in Syria, uh, all the way from Washington D.C. Uh, you know, lifting sanctions um, in uh, for at least medicines in the hospitals. Exactly, and this yes. is one of the things, you know, when we talk about the chemical attacks, when they were asking me in the United States, I'm saying like, they don't have basic medicine and chemicals in order mm -hmm. to give attention to children with cancer in Syria. Yeah. You think they're going to be throwing right now, right now, I don't know before, but right now really weapons into into the, into the children. It just sometimes doesn't, doesn't make sense because I've seen how in Aleppo, four days after the, the liberation of an area, I saw 200 Christian kids between 10 and 13 years old coming with their bucket of paint mm. and with trees in their hands, planting the trees yeah, yeah. and going and, and painting the streets. Mm. I, I could not believe within two days that the street that I saw was completely different mm -hmm. from the other street. I always post these kinds of pictures on my page too, like uh, before and after. You'll see like a, a, a neighborhood which is full of destruction, then after they rebuilt it and painted it. So this is happening a lot in Syria, thankfully. So it's just a matter of time. As soon as we liberate Idlib, uh, things will start improving rapidly, hopefully. Of <laughs> we really, we really hope, we really hope that is going to to happen and this is you know one of the reasons like many of us in the west mm. uh, many of us in the west are supporting syria and mm. we're loving syria and we are here to just tell the truth because we want to help you mm. uh, for this uh, for this war to be finished and mm. to just you have the chance um, and the right to do what you want to do to choose the president that you want to choose the life that you want so nobody country. should have any decision mm. whatsoever in anything that has to do with Syria. Yeah. And my Syrian soul, which I consider myself Syrian from my soul, thinks like this. And I believe it is my heart and my desire, the same desire that Syrian people have, which is leave us alone, let us rebuild, rebuild our country. And hopefully, you know, another way of making war is putting the sanctions. Yeah. And the war is not going to stop if we as people in the West, don't write to all our presidents, our representatives at the United Nations to take real action. So these sanctions can be lifted little by little uh, on Syria. Trek, is there anything else that you would like to add or something else that you would like to say? Well, to all your followers, I know Thanksgiving was a couple of days ago, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And uh, I would advise all your followers that are watching us, if you really want to be educated about Syria, you should really uh, listen to people that are here on the ground seeing things firsthand because 
the mainstream media in your country are liars and the biggest biggest proof is the American election. If you guys remember watching the American election, the mainstream media was telling you 80 to 90% Hillary Clinton is definitely going to win. So you, uh, it's very clear that the mainstream media are liars, they are biased and they have an agenda to play. So if you guys really want to be educated about the situation in Syria, you should listen to reporters and journalists that are here in Syria reporting. Like for example, I really appreciate your work that, uh, <laughs> here in Syria, whether it was about the Aleppo or Eastern Ghouta or the White Helmets, you are doing a great job, we really appreciate it. There are also many reporters and activists like um, Eva Bartlett, uh, Vanessa Bili. There is a Kivork Almasian, he's the founder of Syriana Analysis. I love this guy, he's very, very on point all the time. And there's Sarah Abed and many more. So, you guys, uh, although uh, Kivork and Sarah Abed are living in Europe, yes, but, yes, but yes. they are well, very Sarah educated. is in the United States, yeah. and you know, well, there's Sarah Abdallah too. I yeah. mean, there are. We are an army yeah, yeah. of people that are outside of Syria, that know about Syria, that have been coming to Syria. So, you know, we're doing this also out of love. Mm. And we're doing this out of just this, this impulse that we have and the strength that Syrian people give us when we come over here and we decide to, you know what, we are going to join forces with you and we are just going to advocate for what you deserve and what is your right. Yeah. And this is the thing. So. Um, no, I'm, I'm very proud of you. Uh, we're going to have to do like a second one where we, we give will, up we people will. a little bit more, yeah, you yeah. know, uplifting. Maybe, but <laughs> maybe we'll go out clubbing or something. We'll show them the nightlife in the mosque. Let's city. do that. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, so we're going to do, actually my friend, uh, he's a DJ, Je Jebel, he's going to be playing. So we can probably go out and yeah, we're yeah. going to show you also the nightlife and maybe walk a little bit on the street. The street. So you can see life. I'm going to try to like bring him with me <laughs> so you guys can see this. Um, we, we send her also a like a, a big a big kiss she was yeah. writing to me uh, last night and um, to everyone guys thank you remember share what you want educate the people don't believe anything mm. that we said do your own investigation mm. and then take your own conclusions this is what I always tell you I'm bringing you this information now do your investigation then agree with me or punish me or punish him his page is over there. You can follow him. He makes amazing reports. I like him very much. He actually is very, very, very funny. I think because we're getting very serious, then he started like, stop making his jokes. jokes. <laughs> but we're gonna continue. I love you guys very much. I'm sorry for the Spanish guys that I stopped like making the, the translation. I sometimes lose my mind, you know, it's very normal for me. But at least I didn't cry in this. <laughs> yeah, why would, you, why would you cry? <laughs> you know, every time I talk to a Syrian, they just like touch my heart and then sometimes I cry when they make me the interviews. I said, listen, if you follow me, you already know, like I get emotional, I cry. Guys, we're gonna continue doing lives all the time. I'm still doing lives on my Instagram, on my Twitter account. Uh, Carlo Ortizo also on my Twitter and my Instagram. Here I'm gonna continue doing this as well. Don't worry, nothing is gonna happen to me. Syria is safer than ever, and we're gonna keep on going as close as we can to the still dangerous places. Mwah. Love you. Goodbye. Hasta pronto, chicos. <laughs> Bye.